If you're looking for an affordable vlogging lens for Micro Four Thirds, you might want to consider this lens right here, the Panasonic 14mm f2.5. And at 14 millimeters, it's a 28 millimeter full frame equivalent. It's not super wide, but it's definitely workable. Also, this lens is really small and lightweight. I mean, I'm using it on a GH3. When you look at it from overhead, it barely sticks up past the pop-up flash. This is a tiny lens. Another bonus for vlogging is how quiet the autofocus is. It's completely silent. I mean, even if you're filming with the camera's onboard mic, you're not going to hear this lens autofocus. And at f2.5, you've got a decent amount of bokeh, but keep in mind that is an f5 full frame equivalent. I mean, it looks good, but is it really that much better than the kit lens? Now, one downside of this lens is there is no image stabilization. If you're on a GH5, that's not going to be an issue, but if you're like me and you're filming on an older camera, you might want to keep that in mind. In terms of video, it's a really sharp lens and it has great contrast and great colors. I genuinely love the look of the videos I get with this lens. In terms of autofocus, it's really quick and accurate in stills, and in video, it's... Well, in all honesty, it's good based on what camera you're using. You might have a little bit better performance out of some Olympus cameras, but unfortunately with most Panasonic cameras, Panasonic insists on using a contrast detect autofocus from the 1800s, and it kind of shows. I mean, you might have a little bit of missed autofocus here and there, but that's not really a problem with this lens so much as that's just a problem with Panasonic in general. Overall, the lens performs about as well as you can expect on a Panasonic camera. In terms of this lens versus the kit lens, well, for one, it's a prime, so you'd be giving up that 14 to 42 millimeter zoom range. Optically, this lens is good, but it's not really that much of an upgrade over the lens you probably already own. Really, the only thing you'd be getting from this lens is that f2.5 aperture, and as you've seen in the side-by-side -side comparison, that really doesn't make that much of a difference. Now, if you're literally just looking for more bokeh over the kit lens, you might want to consider the Panasonic Leica 15mm f1.7. That lens is slightly tighter, but it is 1.7 and you will actually notice a significant amount of difference with the blurry background. Other options you might want to consider are the Olympus 12mm f2.0. It's not going to have much more bokeh than this lens, but it is a little bit wider and you will notice a difference in that aspect. And of course, if you're really looking for wide with bokeh, there's always the Panasonic 12mm f1.4. That you will actually notice a pretty big difference. I mean, coming in at $200 new and $130 used, this lens is a good value, but the fact of the matter is, if you already own a kit lens, it's kind of hard to justify this purchase. I mean, the only thing you're really getting is a smaller form factor and a wider aperture. Other than that, it's not really that much of a difference. There's a lot of other lenses with a much faster aperture, and there's a lot of other lenses with a much wider focal length. Yes, those lenses are more expensive, but they offer a lot more functionality than this lens does. I mean, don't get me wrong, if for some reason you have a Micro Four Thirds camera and you don't have a lens, then yes, by all means, consider this lens. It is a good lens at a good price, but if you're looking at this and viewing it as an upgrade from the kit lens that came with your camera, no, it's not really an upgrade. It's really not that different. The only thing you're gaining is a slightly wider aperture and a smaller form factor. Uh, anyway, I think that's all I've got for today, guys. Thanks for watching. I'll see you again next time.